just say we're welcoming you in this wonderful place, which we hope is going to enhance this dinner. So, the occasion, of course, is the launching of the book of Andalus. Love is from Mother Earth. For those that haven't met Andalus before, she holds a master's degree in law and political science from Leiden University in the Netherlands. She is the CEO and co-founder of Earthwise Center, which you can visit on the net, earthwise.org. Anne is also very Mauritian in the sense that not only she's been here for 10 years, but she also contributed to the recognition of the Morn so that it would be part of the UNESCO heritage list. She has been behind the scene. It's probably one of the first time that Anne Luce is going to be in the forefront of the scene for a change. So I will leave you to her now and I wish you a very enjoyable evening. Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you. And um, there will be more people joining in because this is Mauritian time. <laughs> when you say quarter to six, it means we will come for seven. <laughs> yes, island time, which is fine. Um, we're going to just have a wonderful... Can you hear me at the back? Yes? Okay, very nice. So... Um, but Kurt didn't say that he's in fact like an invisible co-author of the book. He's very much a part of it. <laughs> and perhaps in the next book, your name will be right next to it. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to share that. Um, now, today's a very special day. It's solstice. Okay? And when... ...published, it's like uh, it had its first birth. And um, now, in our summer solstice, we get to celebrate here together. And I will be sharing many little stories and anecdotes about the book. But the book is very much um, like that. But before I go into that, um, there are a lot of people who have made it possible that we are here today. So I first want to thank you all. And I don't like to do that at the end, because to me, um, this book is also about gratitude. So we start with gratitude. So, Jack, first. <laughs> Yes, I want to thank you. <laughs> and <laughs> can you pass me the book? That's it. So thank you so much for making it possible for us to be here. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and for Nom Nomila, is Nomile? Here as well. <laughs> Can you do that for her as well? And we have, yes, the next one. Let's go through the list. Yes, from Scots and Co. Is Mr. Vivian here? No? You can? Very nice. So, thanks to Scots and Co., we have wonderful wine today. <laughs> um, and we're serving it at the end, just to make sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> we're serving at the end to make sure you're staying, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Nomila, this is for you. Thank you so much. Yes. And focus photography. And there you go. They have been so kind, so they're sponsoring us today as well um, by making a little film and with the pictures. Thank you so much. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> That's great. And on that topic, are you okay um, for your pictures or, you know, there won't be close-ups, but is it okay if we share that? Yeah? That's nice. Thank 
you. Enjoy this music today. you are. <laughs> so you've met Gita probably on the phone and thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for always being that invisible force. <laughs> Good. So then a little bit about the stories of the book. Um, as some of you have seen, there are 13 letters and many people ask me, why did you write this book? And what I always share with them is that I didn't choose to write this book. I was writing a very different book. Okay? Yes. And um, when, we, this, when the first letter came through, it was in January 2016. And we just had a few months before that all the different terrorist bombings in Europe were made a call. So in one of my mornings, when I was meditating and connecting with Mother Earth, and supporting that healing, um, because there's a lot of things that I do that I don't talk about um, invisibly and just quietly in my own way. But our world is going through quite a difficult time, as we all can see. And uh, I could say humanity is at crisis point. I hope not at make or break point. Um, but we've got a lot to learn. And we've got a lot to remember and to honor. So during one of those meditations, uh, my prayer to Mother Earth, um, was, you know, you are our, our mother. We are your children. Um, I know you love us. And as a mother, you want to take care of us. And you want to make sure that when you see your children are in trouble, you will be reaching out. So what would you like to share with us uh, as your children? What would you like to share so that we can really find our way back to each other and that we can really reconnect with the heart of our humanity and the essence of our humanity? Because it seems that um, we are forgetting that. And so it was in that prayer that then um, the first letter started to come true. And I shared that letter with a few friends. Uh, and when they read it, they said, this is very different from what you were writing. <laughs> what were you doing? And I said, well, I don't know. I just had a very clear vision around that. And I said, I just feel it's an important message. And I was like, what do do? I don't know. All I know is I need to just share that message. Then a couple of days later came the second letter. And then I started to get a hunch, uh-oh, <laughs> this is going to be a book. <laughs> I was like, oh, but I'm writing a different book. <laughs> and I have already written 80 pages of that different book. Um, but then I started to understand this is, you know, this is important. Um, and um, well, it's not up to me to do structures. It's up to me to facilitate it. And so I make myself available. So after the third letter came through, and we started to see there's a sequence in it, and I had this vision around 13 letters. It's a symbol for transformation. We are all very familiar with the 12, 12 zodiac signs, uh, the 12 months. Not many people realize the 13 moons. Yeah. So there's a lot around the feminine and sacred feminine as well in the book. Um, Haya, can you hear me there? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, in the, in the 13th is where the integration takes place. And so, the 13th is really, it really holds the center of everything. Okay, and that is why there are 13 letters as well. 
And um, so after these three letters, I then decided to stop with the other book I was writing and to honor what was happening. Um, and I postponed a lot of my work um, and I just made sure that I was truly available to that um, by also not being distracted and to be able to listen. So every letter that I've written, I've written it a bit like, um, I would say, musicians play and as composers work. Um, I'm also a musician at heart, one of my earlier, well, semi-professions. <laughs> um, but when you play music, you connect with a field. So in the book we talk about this unified field of consciousness. You connect with something that is larger than yourself. And all musicians know um, that when you're really in that flow and you're really sincere, um, there's something that connects through you to connect to everyone else. And that is when it's truly magical, because you feel moved. And in the way that we move, it's like we form one organism together. It's in those moments that we, it seems that like time, time stands still. And as we become one being, we remember again you know, who we really are and what really matters. So also in the writing of this, um, every time when I was writing, I was listening, always very deeply listening. And as I was typing in between, I was always going with my hands like this. It's like with every word, um, feeling the word. And then I would feel this alignment inside my belly, and I feel this calm. Then I knew, okay, now I have the right words. So the whole way or has written itself um, through me, through us, is, is really a, a trust, it's really from inspiration. It's really from deep, deep, deep communion. <coughs> and at the same time, as it always goes with books, um, whatever we share, of course, they will apply. So when I wrote this book, it was during a very difficult time in my life. And I had many reasons during that time to myself give up on love, um, to give up on faith, and to give up on hope. But I myself asked myself each morning as I was facing these challenges, if I in love, love what would you make me do? As love, what would I do? As love, how would I respond to this? And so everything that you are reading here is something also that I have lived, that you lived, that has given us strength in the beginning. And this is also what I'm hearing now back from other people who are reading this book. Uh, is that it, it gives some hope again. And it is not the kind of hope that you have as a nice Walt Disney movie uh, where everything is ended for good. <laughs> um, it's the kind of hope that comes by embracing all the paradoxes, all the difficulties, all the challenges. No matter how difficult it is, no matter how painful, we will step even closer. We will connect even deeper. Because what we tend to do as human beings is when something is challenging and it's painful, and then we either do this or we lash out, and we're angry. Because we're angry because we don't like that feeling, we don't like that pain. But what Mother Earth is sharing through the letters, is that she feels our suffering. She's with us in that suffering. But she doesn't do this. She embraces us. And so she was reminding us through the lessons how also by truly loving each other we heal our world. Because the problems that our world is facing today it's not technological. Yes, it's about sustainability and climate change as well, but underlying that is because we are not sharing our resources fairly, and lovingly, and wisely, and respectfully. We've created societies that just trap and take. Me, 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 me. Yeah? We've got to meet now, but <laughs> that's different. Me. Yeah? And this book is about us. It really is about us. So, um, now we'd like to just share with you the spirit of the book the spirit of solstice, the celebration. See, for Mother Earth, it's now summer and winter solstice at the same time. Okay? 
<laughs> so we're celebrating both as well. Yeah? Because this book is really about that planetary perspective. When we have that bigger planetary perspective, and then we look at ourselves, first of all, is that a lot of our problems here um, and then we start to see the connected dots. And we start to understand in our humanity, ah, oh, this person also has their fears and their concerns and their difficulties and their joys. And we start to see as well there's an up and a flow. There are good days sometimes, there are bad days. But each day we are given the strength again to start that day anew again. So today on Solstice we're celebrating a new cycle. Now, what's truly beautiful is if we can work with the newness in the cycles to renew ourselves. For the summer solstice, we are celebrating the completion of a cycle. For the winter solstice, we are celebrating the beginning of a new cycle. In the heart of winter and the heart of summer. Both death and birth take place simultaneously right now. There are, even in, if we're looking at our lives, there's always new growth, new births, and there is little deaths as well. Today, we'll be reading a little bit from the book as well, what supports this new cycle. And what you find in the book is what is described, is that we are coming now to integration of 16 cycles, four times four. And you'll find more in the book why this matters. So if we are looking at our collective story, there is this um, incredible opportunity that we have as a humanity to truly, you know, it's, it's like um, we've been this family that's been scattered all over the world and we've become all these different faces, all these different cultures, all these different languages. We have the means now to connect and to share in a way that we've never had before. So now as we've gone scattered, diversified, there is also a call to come together and to unify. And in that unification, we remember each other's face again as our own face. So this is what we want to share with you as well in the music today and in the reading. And then since this is informal and we are here with friends, later we really want to make some time to assist with some drinks and some snacks and to come back and have questions and answers. So that you have the opportunity to ask us whatever you want to ask us. Uh, as much as possible <laughs> related to the book, <laughs> yeah, um, because there's so much more that we can learn from each other uh, and grow together, um, you know, by sharing from our hearts. So for this, thank you, and now, <laughs> yes,
the book um, you can actually read with me yeah? so it's on page 57 and this particular letter is like an invocation it's about the birth of a new cycle and um, when that letter came through the vision that was with it was incredibly vivid it will be like experiencing like you go to a cinema but suddenly you're transported right into the scene itself. And you're traveling right into the galaxy. That really was the experience of writing it. It was, it was beautiful. Um, and the words um, only give a glimpse of that. So I'd like you to really travel with me. Because the sounds that were um, as part of this experience of this letter, they are you know, nature speaking directly. So where I'd like to sh share with you is, if you are on page 57, the sound of the birds. Okay. But when you're at home, I recommend that you read, of course, the whole um, letter. So the sound of the birds have awakened more beings within the web of life. More are joining in the symphony of our sacred harmony. With each new sound that enters the playing field of creation, more of our world is sung into being. The symphony of love is getting richer and fuller, activating us deeper and deeper. With each new sound, another dimension opens from within our unified field. More and more portals that serve as gateways for the sharing of our love 
are opening from within us. The crescendo of harmony is becoming a symphonic wave in which all sounds harmonize. They build stronger and stronger, deeper and deeper. We are this wave and realize our oneness and the uniqueness of our essence within this. Our whole being is now a deep wave of pure joy and ecstasy. The waves continue. to build, flowing and embracing all within this beautiful love. We are all touched and activated by the light of the rays of our sun as it shares with us the full, full glory of being. Our whole body is glowing with divine light and within this light all is known as it is. A deep peace emerges now from within the field that we gave birth to. All that is held within this field has been cleansed, cleared, healed, and restored. We are in peace. Day one of our new cycle restores and prepares us for the night. The experience of intense joy and ecstasy now transforms to become a deep sense of fulfillment, peace, and gratitude. And then I like to share the of the night as well as we move into the night. The frogs are croaking and awakening and enjoying. This is in the next page. The cry of the wolves. My dolphin and whale children are joining too with their songs from the heart of my oceans. As the symphony of the night is building, the moon becomes brighter and brighter. With each new ray of moonlight that enters the playing field of our co-creation, more of our wholeness is restored and awakened. A deep humming sound now emerges from the choir of our togetherness, blessed by the new rays of Sister Moon. This humming sound draws us deeper and deeper into the center of our being, where we receive the dreaming of our becoming. As we enter the great mystery, the darkness that surrounds us in the vastness of our universe becomes a blanket of love. We enter the eternal the creation space for all the dreams, visions, hopes, and inspirations not yet born. In this space of our dreaming, we receive the dreams, the visions, and messages that are meant for us from the field of pure potential. The symphony of sounds that brought forth the great humming through which we journeyed to the center is now ebbing into a blissful silence.
Je vais vous lire quelques mots du livre, particulièrement de la lettre de Pierre. Et tout d'abord, je voudrais aussi vous dire quelque chose à propos d'Alphonse. Il se rapporte aussi à ce que vous allez entendre dans cette lettre. Anne-Louise a aussi vécu à peu près dix ans comme à Maurice, en Australie, et pas n'importe où. Elle a étudié, appris, parmi les aborigènes, leurs sciences sacrées. Et c'est aussi donc cette synthèse que vous retrouvez quelque part dans l'esprit du livre, le nord et le sud, qui quelque part s'unissent vers le sang le centre de la terre et c'est un peu ce que je vais vous dire c'est le même processus de réunification qu'il soit du sud, du nord de l'est, de l'ouest l'axe qui mène vers le milieu de la terre Certains connaissent le milieu de la terre comme cette place des rêves, des mythes, tels que la Garta ou Shambhala. Dans ces histoires, le milieu de la terre symbolise le pays des sages, des immortels. Le milieu de la terre existe à l'intérieur de chacun de nous. C'est le lieu d'intégration des quatre éléments du cadran. C'est là que cela se passe. Pour vous, mes enfants humains, l'accès au milieu de la terre ouvre d'une façon particulière le centre de votre cerveau et le centre de votre cœur en synchronicité. C'est notre accès vers le jardin éternel, la demeure où tout s'unifie, où la conscience est une. De cette synchronisation et de cette harmonisation avec ce champ unifié de notre conscience on peut voir que tout ce qui est fragmenté se réunit, tout ce qui est divisé dans nos mondes revient ensemble. Mes bien-aimés, je vous invite à entrer au centre de la terre. Fermez vos yeux si vous voulez bien faire l'exercice. Prenez une respiration profonde. Et retenez-la, chèrement, dans votre cœur, dans votre esprit, pour accéder ainsi au milieu de la terre, à l'intérieur de vous. Concentrez-vous sur ce principe d'une trinité sacrée, de l'un et qui émerge ainsi, dans le principe du Père et de de l'Esprit divin qui donne la vie. Demandez à ce principe sacré de la Trinité d'unifier en vous ce qui était divisé, ce qui était polarisé à l'intérieur de vous. Permettez à cette vie des deux triangles unis, l'un pointant vers le haut et l'autre pointant vers le bas, et qui forme cette étoile à six branches. L'étoile vers le haut représente cette unité de l'un, devenu le Père divin, la Mère divine dans le principe. Celui du bas est un triangle qui représente l'unité dans l'alchimie de l'amour, du Père et de la Mère divine. Ce principe qui apporte en avant cet esprit divin de la vie.
Cet esprit divin donc représente ainsi cette flamme de l'amour qui emmène à transformer toute chose dans une forme de source d'amour pur. Fermez vos yeux et pensez à ceci. Nous sommes aujourd'hui au sol 6 dans un pays du sud où la lumière est la plus intense. Alors qu'au même moment, dans un pays du nord, les ténèbres sont les plus fortes. Cela demande à notre état de conscience que celui de la division entre ces ténèbres et cette lumière pour aller par-delà cela, pour comprendre vraiment cet esprit de ce seul 6, qui est un esprit de renouvellement qui est le nôtre, que nous cherchons dans cette terre intérieure. Il ne s'agit pas de poser, il ne s'agit pas de complémentarité, mais il s'agit de quelque chose par-delà tout cela qui s'exprime de façon différente selon les dieux.
is if you look at uh, page 108, it's about how nature is love. Love embraces everything and everyone unconditionally, because nothing can divide. Love is unconditional because nothing can condition it. It is not formed nor influenced by our minds. It is not of the mind, and it is not of the temporal dimensions of our worlds. Love is from the eternal. Its perception is always universal. Love liberates because love is free. So, the cover of the book. So, the painting is from a, a dear friend of us, Rachel Tribble. And um, she is a Native American sun dancer. I don't know if some of you know about uh, this. The yeah, ceremony is um, very courageous to do that. Uh, so, it's, it's a way to um, you're connected via a wire and needles through the skin. With the totem pole, and you go around in a sacred dance. You have to fast a long time before that and really prepare to receive the visions of the sun. And you'll find as well if this chapter 11, it is a letter from our sun. So it's not only mother, <laughs> it's also uh, a son. So when I was looking for somebody who could give the illustrations and the paintings, um, she came into my life. And after she received the book from a friend of ours, and she read the messages, and especially of chapter 11, our son, she said, these are our sacred teachings, and she'd never seen them written out. So she felt such a deep connection with the book, that she sent me a whole file of opera paintings, and she says, you may have these for the book, because they need to be there. Now, Rachel won many international awards, and is an illustrator for Disney. Um, so, she's not a small artist, so for her to come with such generosity, um, I was really, really touched by that. And as we put together the meanings, so um, her vision of this was that um, at the completion of the Garden of Eden, of the eternal garden, it's like creation fell out of that and came into our world. And so that was her vision for making the painting. And you find each of the paintings, there's a little bird there. Um, that's the painting of that is Follow Me. You will see on the website, a little bit further, yeah. Um, it's that little bird that's been floating around, you may have seen it. And you'll see that the bird is this square, and then there are this, that's it. So it's called Follow Me, the bird Follow Me. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is that. Sometimes our minds are really square. We have a very square perspective of life. Yeah? <laughs> and yet the nature of life is circular. Okay? Um, we need to learn to dance with both. So follow me so as you go through the quadrants and in the book they integrate. And then you enter into the circle. And the circle is the unity. Because when we stand in circle with each other, we're all equal. <laughs> so there's a lot of symbolism that you'll see in the book. John Cooper then um, uh, worked with the illustrations to put it beautifully together. And um, the foreword is written uh, by a very good friend of us, uh, Professor Alexander Lasko. Um, I think some of you may know his dad, uh, well, Urban Lasko. Yeah? Um, a genius in his own right, and his uh, son. He's just as amazing in his inspiration and, and, and his understanding and his knowledge. Um, so I was really very grateful 
um, when Alexander said, yes, I want to write a foreword for this book, and summarizes it all also so beautifully. Now, when this was still in, in draft form, um, and I shared it with Alexander, one day I opened my email, and I had not even finished the last letter. I see there an email um, from his dad and many very famous authors, and it's this book, Beyond the Fear and Hope, and I asked myself, why am I the mailing list for that? <laughs> and I opened this book, Beyond Fear and Hope, and then I see, ah, he quoted already from the book. So he kind of made sure I would finish it. <laughs> and um, so then when the last letter came through, between the 12th letter and the 13th letter, there was a year of integration. That was a pause. And I didn't know when the 13th letter was going to come. And then in June this year, suddenly there it was. And I sat down and it, and it came. And so when I finished, I contacted Alexander and said, look, your dad wrote about 70 books. Um, so he must have a publisher, right? Yes, he does. Um, I said, do you know where I can get this published? And do you think it's a good idea to go by a publisher or self-publish? He said, no, you should go through it. Use the publisher of my dad. He says, I'll give you an email. It's called the Hill. And uh, I didn't know who Bill was. Um, so I thought just in case I'd be calling Mr. Gladstone. Um, I only found out later he was the owner of Water Farm Press. <laughs> and the founder and a well-known author in his own right. But so, dear Mr. Gladstone, here's the manuscript. I had not gone through the official submission guidelines. Uh, so let's just see. Um, but I wasn't counting on anything, so I wrote him an email. If you don't want to publish it, can you please let me know as soon as possible? Um, so I can find someone else. And uh, the next morning as I woke up, uh, in my email, I found from Mr. Gladstone uh, a reply. He said, the book is wonderful, it's ready for publication, just have a proof friend, it needs to go out, I want to support it, here's the contract, I'm going to wait for my fees. You won't have to pay anything with Amazon either. <laughs> so I thought, okay. It is incredible, yeah? And it's been ever since uh, like that, because I see myself as a custodian for these letters, not the originator at all. Uh, my role is simply to make sure that these teachings can go further into the world and that more people can benefit from it, just as I have benefited so much from this. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and I'd love to hear your stories as well. And, and I have a feeling that it's in our, our story, maybe it's the 13th letter, the next book will be one from that process, <laughs> as we all grow in our story. So for the next song, can, can you share with us a little bit about the meaning of what you're going to sing first? <laughs> hey, from the Godfather movie, uh, it's a famous song about that. Very subtle, and uh, that's it. That's that's this one. Deal with some some intro introduction to the. the
was really nice. We had a long questions and answers. And that was so rich. Um, because also the questions of the people encouraged uh, us to share more. Yeah? Um, and we have some really nice snacks and we have wine and we have all the drinks here. Uh, by the very time we guys spoke in whole Finnish languages and of course to break it. Thank you. Um, so what I would suggest is let's get can we get a drink to bring it in here? Is that possible? Or? Yeah? Okay. So let's get something to drink uh, and eat and let's come back here. And then we continue um, through questions and answers. Very clear intention and how you're going to step into that new phase of your life, and then as you stand, quick also that go up and say, Find gratitude. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful that you, you, you're reminding me of that again because today you're standing also in completing the cycle and starting a new cycle. So you'll find that always in your life there are these opportunities. There are times, sometimes we are in between phases, we're in a transition, collectively, we are in such a phase. Sometimes you can just see that everything seems to complete in your life. And I really honor everything that you've experienced. I always say there's a, there's a treasure of wisdom within every experience. Sometimes it's in disguise. <laughs> yeah. So we don't always recognize it initially. But if you look deeper, you find there's a treasure of wisdom there. Once you find that treasure of wisdom, let go of the form. Let go of whatever way that, that lesson manifested for you in your life. Just thank it for the growth and let it go and then really receive what its true purpose and its true intention was about. And celebrate it. And then that gives such strength. Because then you know you're even more whole. You're even more actualized from within. You then start the next journey. Because as every every step that you take. You're stepping within the web of life. So the more you actualize that from within, every step that you take, it's, it's like if you put so how see when I experienced life as music. Imagine that you have this incredible playing field, all these keynotes. Yes? So say that this keyboard here, imagine that that is now everywhere around, and as you take the next step, there's no sound to it. And there's no one. And every step that you take, you're stepping in a you know, within a harmony, and you bring it in, into being. And as that sound comes through you, you become a tool that activates the next sound. So later, when you look back at your life, you see that your life also was music. And sometimes there was this amazing harmonics, sometimes <laughs> the opposite of that. But then you're going in the face of the disharmony. Remember that the only reason you can experience that is a disharmony is because somehow in your being you know harmony. The only reason why you feel pain is because you also know love. So capacity to still also even feel pain. Is that somewhere you in your being you know love. The rush you wouldn't be able to feel the pain, you wouldn't feel something's missing. So
So bring your life into being, taking every step in your life with clear intention, consciously, with gratitude and appreciation. Imaginez que ce petit bébé va soudainement sortir, jaillir, like a jump out of the box. Imaginez-vous que vous êtes cet enfant accroupi qui soudainement s'élance, s'éveille dans le monde, dans la vie. Et ressentez cette énergie extraordinaire. Just feel this energy of you as a little fetus completely full and ready to come out. Feel this fantastic energy which is pushing you out. No one can stop that. It's happening. This is you. Your inner transformation into the new person you want to be. Just feel this tremendous energy all through your body and mind and soul. Just come. Breathe in this new life and open your eyes gently and enjoy. Thank you all for coming.